Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the Acoustic series with ComSol Multiphysics. A few videos have already been uploaded where we talked about several technical aspects of acoustic simulation. This particular series is meant for researchers and hence we are focusing less on demonstration and we are focusing more on the technical details. Today we will talk about technical details of acoustic Gaussian explosion. This particular file is available in the application library so you can have access to that. But we will be talking about the technical part so that you can implement this knowledge to develop your own research problem. Before I move on to the technical discussion, I would like to say that we have initiated a service where we help you developing your research problem. If you want to avail this service, then you write to me in the email ID given in the description box. I will write back to you. We will set up video calls and we will try to resolve your problem. So in today's problem, we are working on Gaussian explosion and as you can see, this is how we, the, we created the geometry. Actually, this <coughs> geometry is created by ComSol itself. We are just demonstrating. We are just uh, speaking about the technical details. So one thing is important here that we are not taking frequency domain pressure acoustics. Rather, we are directly taking the time domain pressure acoustic equation. So this is the fundamental equation where we should start with. So you can see here, this is nothing but the pressure acoustic equation. If you have a quick look into the Wikipedia page, you look at, you can look this particular equation. So <clears throat> we have talked about all the terminologies in separate videos. If you go through all the videos in the acoustic series, then you can realize, you can actually learn about the equation. But the special thing which we are talking today is we are working with time domain pressure acoustics. So this is the time dependent term. You can see uh, this is a wave equation. So we have a second derivative of the time with respect to time. And those are the divergence of gradient of pressure. Or you can see, you can actually think about the Laplacian of pressure. And this Pt is equal to P plus Pv. I have already talked about it. Pv is the background pressure and this P is for the scattered pressure. So whenever acoustic wave travels, it hits on a solid substrate, then it scatters. And <clears throat> due to that scattering, total wave you have to actually calculate by algebraic sum of those two contributions. We have already talked about those things. Now let us see uh, what exactly we have taken here. So this is automatically, this thing automatically comes. That is a transient pressure acoustic. And again, it is uh, talking about the same equation. The only difference is here we have a sudden source of sound. That means a sudden acoustic pressure is coming which we are taking as a Gaussian function. So that Gaussian function will be applicable. I mean, uh, that Ga Gaussian function means at a very narrow time interval, you have a huge amplitude. And for the other time, you don't have that much amplitude. So if you look at the Gaussian curve, for example, they have taken a few Gaussian curve. So you can see this is <coughs> how the Gaussian curve looks like. So at a certain time interval, you have peak and for rest of the time or rest of the positive x axis you or t axis, you don't have much amplitude. So this is how the Gaussian pressure or any Gaussian function looks like. So we'll have pressure distribution for this much time interval like this. And that pressure distribution, it will create certain acoustic turbulence at a particular point and then it would propagate because sound is a propagating wave. So <clears throat> let's see how exactly that has been added. So this thing has been added as, as a point source. So you can see there is a point where we are taking this Gaussian function 
so from the drop down you can actually choose this option you would also have the provision to make it a user defined function but here console has taken a gaussian function a gaussian function whose amplitude is one and f0 is the frequency bandwidth and the pulse peak is t0 so this is how the gaussian function looks like if you look at this particular equation this is nothing but the gaussian expression so here we have given the value of a the value of f0 is given and the value of tp is also given so all those parameters are en enlisted here so you can have a look at those parameters so now if you look at the equation so when you are adding this additional gaussian pulse then you need to modify your equation and you can see another additional term has come up so here this is the delta function gaussian delta function and for the <clears throat> for the unit balance you can see there is a 1 by rho c term so similarly 1 by rho c is coming here and this is the gaussian pulse you can see i mean the actually the time derivative of the gaussian pulse is coming here because you know if you just compare the units you have a 1 by rho c here you have 1 by rho c here and you have second derivative of so divergence of gradient so it will become like a second derivative with respect to space and so it, it also has second derivative with respect to time so for that unit conservation you are taking a derivative with respect to the i mean with respect to time derivative of the gaussian function so yeah here is this so derivative del dou dou t of qs where qs is the gaussian function now if you just uh, try to <coughs> compare the units you will find both the units are similar so ultimate idea is one gaussian pulse will be originated here at a time which is in between tp minus 1 by f0 to tp plus 1 by f0 so here the pulse will <laughs> appear then it will propagate so, so for this propagation what we need to do we need to solve this time dependent equation transient transient pressure equation all those are the boundary conditions solid sound hard boundary conditions have been taken to rest of the places initial values are kept at zero and i have mentioned about the point source in detail and then it is solved for the time dependent part and in time dependent we are basically solving for this particular time range and the information about this time uh, scale has come from those frequency and uh, other parameters so if we just click on compute it will start computing and it will take a few minutes we can wait until the simulation finishes you can see this is running very fast so it will be completed soon so we can expect at a certain time there is a peak peak means a pressure appearance and then it slowly moves in this particular direction actually it will move in all three dimension but for the simulation simplicity this particular simulation has been done in two dimensional geometry but in real situation you should look for a three dimensional uh, simulation but three dimensional simulations are costly with respect to calculations that's why people prefer to do either axisymmetric or two dimension so you can see this is the gaussian pulse which is appearing so with respect to time if we look at the acoustic pressure so initially there was nothing then a peak a gaussian peak appears and if you look at what's happening here with respect to time i'm changing the time steps here so you can see this gaussian pulse has appeared now it will move across yeah it is moving forward you can see as i am <coughs> proceeding with time you can see there is a wave which is being 
travel that is a traveling wave yeah you can see there is no more acoustic disturbance because this is a pulse function gaussian function is nothing but a pulse for a certain time it appears then it attenuates to zero so that time has el elapsed and hence now there is no pulse there is no origination of the pressure but whatever pressure you have actually put in by this gaussian pulse that will actually propagate because this is a sound wave it has to propagate once it once it has originated and that is what it is happening here and yeah with respect to time you can see it has reached to the corner okay so this kind of situation actually i mean this simulation is mimicking say you suddenly uh, crack is uh, you suddenly burst a firecracker so what will happen at for a very momentary time there will be a huge pressure shoot up and that pressure then propagates through the air medium so this kind of simulations uh, can be targeted using this setup and hence this would be helpful if you are working with a problem which is very close to this particular Gaussian pulse explosion. So with this I stop today and I request you to subscribe to our channel so that we get more motivation to upload videos.